And just like that, we are back. Devin Haney gets confronted by British promoter Eddie Hearn. Eddie Hearn has now exposed the fracas that he had with Devin Haney, and he explains his side in a new interview. I'm going to let you listen to it. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the video so you can get the complete story and then make your judgment. Listen, I'm the best in the business, and it's not even close, and I'm making boxing a better place. You can help me by supporting what's real. So make sure you guys like, and we'll get into it. Eddie Hearn did a brand new interview with Boxing News Plus. I will link it in the description. Check out the full interview and give them the credit for it. But Eddie Hearn, he, you know, his big fighter lost Joshua. I made videos about that post-fight breakdowns. Check that on the channel. And he was speaking on a situation, if you will, a fracas, an altercation, a quarrel that he had with Devin Haney. And he explains the, the reason behind it. Now, I want you to see the interaction. We're going to do this Quentin Tarantino style, where I want you to see the recorded transaction or interaction, and then we'll listen to what Eddie Hearn had to say. So this is Devin Haney and Eddie Hearn, and they're clearly going at it. Like this, you could tell, you don't know what's being said, but it doesn't look kosher and it doesn't look like it doesn't look like friendly, if you will. You can't, they're not mic'd up. So he's like this, this, and Eddie Hearn's looking like, yo, what's what gives? And I want you guys to see this just so you can see the body language, if you will. It's all about the body language. This is them at the Joshua versus Daniel Dubois fight. And Eddie Hearn, he's, you know, giving Devin a piece of his mind. In less than one minute, we will listen to what Eddie Hearn had to say and why it went down like this. I've already made a video about this. Dang, Eddie going off. Hey, hey. Again, I can play the audio, but you can't really hear it. So you can't really tell what's going on, and I don't want to get any kind of copyright for the music. Player. So that's what went down. Eddie Hearn does, in a brand new interview, explain what that was all about. Listen. Roll the clip. Of all people, filmed you and Devin Haney having an <laughs> argument. Uh, what was the crack there? What was being said? It didn't look. It looked kind of heated. Didn't look heated. Like it was heated because I don't know if you saw the Twitter about picture. the tickets. Yeah, and I just couldn't believe. Like, bear in mind the relationship that I've got with Devin. Bear in mind everything that we've been through. I could not believe he would put that out on social media because he was moaning. And this is what he was trying to say to me. He said, no, no, I received a message from him at 6 a.m. on the day of the fight saying I need tickets for Joshua. He messaged me, I think, 24 hours before saying, yo, right? And I had so much going on, I didn't reply. And then when I replied Friday night, he messaged me back Saturday at 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, I need tickets for tonight. And firstly... All of the inner ringside tickets were pre-assigned with his excellency. Connor Ben, of all people, filmed you and Devin Haney <laughs> having an argument. Uh, well so you can hear Eddie Hearn, he's already like kind of upset because of how this situation played out. Let's keep going. By Friday night, he messaged me back Saturday at 6 o'clock in the morning, 7 o'clock in the morning, I need tickets for tonight. And firstly, all of the inner ringside tickets were pre-assigned with His Excellency and various people. Plus, we had months' notice from our fighters who had put in requests that we'd sorted out. So at that point, we just don't have the tickets. Right? So I said, look, it's not solely our show that you know, we're just working on the event. You, you may have to ask Riyadh season you know, for, for the tickets. No reply. So then I'm sitting there at the show and it's like, wow, Eddie Hearn didn't get me tickets. You know, this is, uh, he's so two-faced. It's like, so I just replied, I said, you're, a, you're, an, you're an arrogant, to be honest with you. Like, and I, I pulled him at the show and I said, what do you think you're doing? 
And he said, well, what you, oh, hey, hey. I said, no, not hey, hey. I said, what are you doing? I said, one, you, you couldn't be more arrogant. Two, why are you just not messaging me after my, I message you to say, come on, Eddie, like, you sure you can't help? Like, whatever, you put a tweet out. I said, you're like, like a little kid. I said, you used to be a, used to be a good kid, you did. I said, now, I don't like this, this arrogance that I'm seeing from you. I said, so don't ever do that again. And he was like, no, no, I don't, well, you said, you know, you said something about me in the media. I said, no, I'm just answering questions. I don't represent you. I said, so if I get asked about Devin Haney, I'm going to tell you what I think about the situation. And I've never said anything disrespectful. I said, but you have. I said, so don't ever disrespect me again. And make sure you download the new boxing. Hey, what? Hey, yo. hey man, same man. Eddie Hurd, he, he got to put it down, man. What could I say? And he already got to put it down. He said, don't you ever. <laughs> don't you ever, 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 ever disrespect me again. Hey, I, I, listen, I respect it. Ego thoughts. I let you listen to it uncut. The link is in the description so you can hear everything he had to say. But I want to focus in on what he said. Now, just the ego thoughts, the recap. He said, Devin Haney message him back no hold on let's let's do it from the top he says that he was busy with the show Devin hit him on friday show being on saturday and said yo which you know that doesn't really say what it's about so right then and there i already respect it from eddie hearn because just think about it if you were a promoter and you had a show with almost 100,000 people that were going to be at your show, you know, and you, you've seen the ticket sales and stuff. They have that information for Joshua Dubois. And you're in the middle of being a partner, you know, because it's Riyadh season, Queensberry promotion, and Eddie Hearn in rematch room promotion. So just think. Put yourself in the mind frame, right? And in the midst of all of this, somebody texts you with something that is like, minuscule and meaningless like yo you're probably not worried about that you 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 your fighter just made weight you got other fighters on the car you're not really worried about some yo like small talk so i respect that you know i know i certainly wouldn't be if a person <laughs> like i got a show to run and you talking about some yo you know what i mean it just for me that don't really that ain't really doing it that ain't going to do it, right? I've got with Devin. Bear in mind everything that we've been social media because he was moaning and this is what he was trying to say to me. He said, no, no, I received a message from him at 6 a.m. on the day of the fight saying I need tickets for Joshua. He messaged me, I think, 24 hours before saying, yo. See, yo ain't going to cut it. Right? And I had so much going on, I didn't reply. He said he didn't reply. And then when I replied Friday night, he messaged me back Saturday. At he said he hit him back when he, as soon as his earliest convenience, Friday. Devin then hit him at 6 a.m. in the morning and said, yo, I need tickets for the Joshua fight. What? Six o'clock in the morning. So and then Eddie Hearn, as you guys heard, he went on to say that I have fighters that are signed to me that I have an obligation for my staff. Devin and his dad want to be free agents. They're like, oh, we we are own bosses. That's fine. But then you can't get mad at a businessman or a promoter when you're your own boss and you're not tethered to anyone. And then he got to look after his actual fighters that made the plunge, that made the commitment to his organization, his brand, his entity. For example... Why would, if you're just don't see, this is where I excel and a lot of others fail because I am an alpha male and there's a lot of beta males that want to put their boxing opinions out there. The problem with the beta male is it's not facts over feelings. They're going to rely oftentimes on, you know, what they feel, who they like, favoritism and bias doesn't matter if I like a fighter, if I 
don't prefer that fighter, if I like their style or not. When I do my commentary, and this seems to rub a lot of beta males wrong, they get mad at me for voicing my opinion, but I'm always real. I'm always transparent. And at the end of the day, I can always tell you why I feel a particular way. So in this situation, this is not my beef. This is not my altercation. This is between Eddie Hearn and Devin Haney. But now since they've made it public and I'm an entertainer, I'm a boxing analyst with social medias, then now since it's a public issue, I'm giving you my public opinion. That's how that works. If they kept this behind closed doors and it was just speculation, I probably wouldn't even touch it because it would be a bunch of he said, she said. But now that it's a public issue, I'm going to give you guys my uncut opinion. Eddie Hearn is in the right. Devin Haney is not. You hit him up with some yo. He's organizing an event. He's like, you got You have to understand it's like attending a party is much different than hosting a party. Because if you're having a house party and you're a high schooler, you're having a house party, your parents are away or something. You have to worry about people stealing, people, you know, doing illegal stuff in your house, the cops being called. You got to worry about people throwing up on your mom's carpet, people breaking stuff because there was some kind of fight or whatever. You got to worry about people spilling drink or your house catching on fire, people going through your pantry. and So you can't enjoy the party the same as just somebody who's who's um, going to the party and. I can attest to this because I have covered hundreds of boxing events. It's not the same as me going to a boxing event as a civilian. I have a job to do. So right after Wilder or whoever knocks out a person, Crawford, I've been at Crawford knockouts. I've seen Wilder knockouts. I've watched Errol Spence fights and knockouts a lot. I've seen all these guys, right? So I've been to these events and while everyone else is worried about let's go get something to eat or let's go to the club because they got they got satisfied with their knockout. They seen a great fight and they just go on to the next thing. Me, I got to work. So it's always a different experience. And I treat my business like an actual business. So anybody who's ever seen me at a fight, they know I come to do one thing and one thing only. That's to get busy in the work. So I understand what Eddie Hearn is saying. Somebody texting you that's not your fighter talking about yo not getting cutting straight to the chase you probably aren't going to take that as a a high priority in the midst of trying to organize a show and run a show and and basically like this is a job i'm sure eddie hearn probably likes it i don't know but this is a job people like you're not here for the small talk so i fully think so far eddie hearn is on the money with what he's saying you're hitting him up at 6 a.m. And another reason why, for me, what Eddie Hearn is saying, I don't always trust everything or agree with everything Eddie Hearn says. Y'all know that. I voiced it when I don't, and I voiced it when I do. Here's the thing. Another reason why this sounds very realistic, the fight took place in the U.K. in Wembley, you know, at the stadium Wembley, and then you have an American, and this sounds like a, a pompous American attitude because you're not factoring in the time zone differences. If you're Devin Haney, you live in the West Coast, you live on Pacific Standard Time, you're probably hitting Eddie Hearn up and not maybe being cognizant of what time it is over there in the UK, which is a, a, a big difference. So that's why the timelines actually make sense with what Eddie Hearn is saying. He's like, he hit me up saying, yo, I couldn't get back to him. And then when I did, I hit him up. He responded back at six in the morning, right? And that makes sense because they're likely on two different time zones. And it's doubtful that Devin Haney took the time to be like, oh, you know, let's see what time Eddie Hearn is on and what time in the morning it is. Because a lot of people, let's be real, they want what they want for themselves. And Devin Haney probably last minute elected to fly over to London in the UK and wanted to attend the fight. And he thought the face card and I work with Eddie and weren't going to be no problems. And Eddie's like, nah, we got people and fighters who months in advance have declared that they need a seat and they're, they're going, their family's going or whatever. They're he plus one. He put that out on social media. He messaged me at six o'clock in the morning. Months notice from our fighters months who put in requests that we'd sort it out. So at that point, we just don't have the tickets. He said we don't have tickets. And that makes sense. First come, first serve. Now, Sure, 
if it's a high profile celebrity like let's say Dwayne the Rock Johnson if he wanted to go that would be a good look for the event so I'm sure they probably would find a way to accommodate that person and Devin Haney was sitting next to Crawford so they did find a way to get him in and squeeze him in Eddie Hearn is simply saying we don't like match room we specifically don't have enough tickets to just you know be giving them out for you and your your team or whoever's with you or whatnot you see what i'm saying because we have people who have rsvp'd that makes perfect sense in the haney acts they're not going to tell you this just like they don't tell you that if it weren't for me the haney acts wouldn't even tell you some of you guys don't even know this is going on this whole eddie hearn beef because they won't make videos and they won't make posts and content surrounding it me i don't have a horse in the race I don't have no ill will towards anybody in the sport of boxing, but I will speak my mind. The Haniacs won't. They won't tell you. They only say if it's something good that makes Devin Haney look good. I made a video about Ryan Garcia and the sparring, the clip that leaked online, and gave you my honest opinion and what that looked like. The Haniacs won't even talk about these things, so you know who's really being biased. Right. So I said, look, it's not solely our show that you know we just work. Not solely our show. That's another great point from Eddie Hearn. This is Riyadh season. So Turkey is the organizer. He got his own people and whatever else going on. You got Frank Warren, another promoter who got Hamza Shiraz and Daniel Dubois. It's not just a match room show. It's not solely Eddie Hearn. Like, I don't know. Like there's certain shows that's just, it's just straight up and down a match room show. This is not, because you have Riyadh season and Frank Warren and they got tickets that Daniel Dubois, his kid or family or whatever needs tickets. So I agree with what Eddie Hearn is saying on the event. You, you may have to ask Riyadh season. He said you have to ask Riyadh season. Devin Haney didn't reply, which is another arrogant move. Like you could have been like, oh, you a buster or thanks anyway. And then when he does reply, it's on social media for the world to see. That's bad, bro. So then I'm sitting there at the show and it's like, wow, Eddie Hearn didn't get me tickets. You know, this is, uh, he's so two-faced. It's like, so I just replied, I said, you're a, you're, an, you're an arrogant. He said, you're an arrogant effing P-R-I-C-K, to be honest with you. Like, how dare you, basically. Wow. So again, the Haniacs come to my channel because the Haniacs aren't going to tell you this. They're not going to let you know what's really going on. Again, I'm honest. I'm candid. I agree with Eddie Hearn here. Eddie Hearn, what he's saying is very reasonable and it makes sense. It's not just a matchroom show. There's other considerations, other organizers, other promoters to make that event. It's a sought out event in the UK. Eddie Hearn is being real. He's like, I'm looking after my people that are assigned to me. And then... He said, Devin Haney said, hey, hey. So that's weird also. If you said Devin Haney, and I made a video, you guys can check it. Devin Haney publicly tweeted, because he got mad, that Eddie Hearn is the biggest snake he's ever met. This is what he said. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty close to what he actually said, right? So you're saying he's two-faced and he's the biggest snake ninja that you've ever met. This is a guy you've worked with. And... The way Eddie Hearn is depicting it, which we haven't heard Devin Haney get on wax and say, oh, you're a liar, Eddie Hearn, because at the end of the day, you know what you said to someone and Eddie Hearn, what I know about him, he'll probably expose you. If you if what he's saying is true and Devin Haney says you a goddamn liar, Eddie Hearn will probably put out the tweets or the text message just to be like, all right, I'm lying. Huh. And then that's how you know who's lying. Because now when the receipts come out and he posts that text message thread of whatever, and it's very close to what he just depicted, then Devin Haney would look very bad. So as of me recording the video, we haven't heard Devin Haney actually come back and, you know, refute anything Eddie Hearn's saying. And I agree. See, Eddie Hearn, he's, he's like my generation, you know, my generation moves different than this Gen Z. This new Gen Z is washed. Like they do a lot of stuff. They take to social media like it's Dear Diary. They have a problem and they just run to social media. These streamers do things that get them kicked off of platforms. And then they get on Gen Z gets on the Internet and then they start crying about how they got kicked off. But they were saying distasteful 
and insensitive things and then they're upset that they got kicked off of twitch or rumble or youtube or whatever x whatever platform and my generation you saw things like mono we mono man to man more more so in that lane you know if two people have a difference of opinion or at least at the very least my generation is about that is your first attempt now if you can't do that then that's where maybe you decide to make it a public issue but i noticed with this younger crowd gen z they want to make it public instantaneously and to me that is a sign of weakness because a man got to be in control I, I stress this all the time on my channel even on my boxing channel more so than a lifestyle channel i do talk about the lifestyle and masculine energy and stuff like that and it's just a weak beta male type of trait if you have a disagreement and your first instinct is not to try to hash it out with the person behind the scenes but let me get on tweet about it and make it a public issue i i just don't believe that i don't believe about it like i in my personal life if someone had a problem with boxing ego but they have my number and they make it a public issue before they reach out to my number then i automatically think less of them as a man because if you have my direct line of contact and i'm not hard to find and you have my number and you had an issue why would it ever get to the public before it got to me when you have a direct line of content so i 100 percent feel what eddie hearn's saying he's saying you are like a little kid you know a I, little kid i've done right by you and then the other thing is Devin Haney saying, hey, you're a snake, you're a snake. But what is really snaky to not reply and then expose or try to expose Eddie Hearn? And then when you see him and he confronts you and he's like, don't ever do that again. What is your problem? You're like, hey, hey, that's what at least Eddie Hearn was saying. I showed you the clip, but they weren't mic'd up, so I couldn't hear it. But Eddie Hearn's like, oh, hey, hey, and, oh, you said in the media, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, nah, bro, none of that. There ain't no hey, hey. So that that looks snakier than what Eddie Hearn did. If he has the tickets, he has the tickets. It, even if he has tickets and don't want to give Devin Haney a ticket, that's his right. It's his event or partially his event. If he don't want Devin. And then the other thing that looks bad is Devin Haney let a fighter who's made less than him talk about him. That's one of the first things that Devin Haney will, will go towards. Oh, you a broke bum. I made millions. I'm making money. You ain't never touched this type of paper. But then you're a celebrity that's made millions and made this type of money. And you're complaining and you're crying because you can't get free tickets. That looks bad as well. I don't know where you guys are from, but what millionaire, multimillionaire is complaining because he can't get tickets for free. That sounds kind of cheap to me. Like you're a millionaire. I'm sure you you could find probably a UK. Hey, mate, we got bro, we got some tickets to scout. We're scalping tickets, mate. Yeah, Bella, and we you, you could probably find somebody at the event scalping tickets or who got some tickets, ringside. You could really pay for it. So it what Eddie Hearn is saying is is true. It is arrogance. And I think that same arrogance got the Devin Haney dropped multiple times versus Ryan Garcia. He felt too big for his bridges ahead of the fight with Ryan Garcia. He thought Ryan was washed up, acting crazy and all that extra stuff. And he was feeling it. And then he underestimated Ryan Garcia and his whole team did. Talking about psychology for dummies. And then Ryan threw you for a loop and knocked you down a million times, right? So, yeah, I do think there's a level of arrogance that we've seen. I mean, even Devin Haney's team taking shots at me. Bro, I ain't never said nothing. I've known Devin since he was like 15, 16. I never said nothing crazy about Devin Haney. But again, that's what arrogance would do. You start feeling yourself and, you know, thinking you're above people. And it is what it is. You know what I mean? So I, I don't really have sympathy for a multimillionaire mad because they can't get tickets for free at the last minute. You just think the face card is good and like, oh, Eddie know me, so yeah, I'm going to get in for free. Like at best, you probably should have hit him up two weeks a month before like everybody else i'm sure connor ben or whoever else got tickets and, and finally the thing is what eddie hearn is saying is true devin haney wants to be a free agent you got dhp promotions you got your own thing
he's like, I'm giving you people my opinion, like probably the Andre Ward interview with um, all the smoke and stuff. You're not my fighter. So Devin Haney is like almost like he's in a fantasy world. Like, this is business. You thought Eddie Hearn was your boy and like you kick it and, you know, and stuff like that. He's a businessman. His priority, why would he not look after Connor Ben and Joshua's family? They've made millions together, Joshua and Eddie Hearn and whoever else. Whoever wanted to get in, Katie Taylor. And then to be honest, I'm not even trying to be rude, but there's just bigger stars that than Devin Haney that are in a different position. So them being in attendance, like Crawford has never been beat up like Devin Haney got beat up in his last fight. So Crawford being there, Conor McGregor being there. Tyson Fury is coming off a loss, but Tyson Fury's also got an upcoming fight with Riyadh season. We don't even know what Devin Haney's next bout is. So there's probably other celebrities in the queue that them being there, Usyk. Usyk is an undisputed guy. So, and he did it twice and he's done it with different competition, not Cambosis like Devin Haney. So I feel like Devin really is feeling himself and he feels like I, he the A-list celebrity and he, as soon as he announces, then people need to start making accommodations. Terrence Crawford probably made the arrangement with Turkey a long time ago that he was going to be in attendance. You can't just pop up the day before a fight, celebrity or not, and think that, oh, I'm getting in this. You know what I mean? So I, I feel Eddie Hearn. Let me know what you guys think. Eddie Hearn broke it down and why it took place, how he took place. And like I said, the final thing I'll say, ego final thoughts, is this Gen Z, hopefully they learn to use social media and use it only to your advantage. It's not to your advantage when you make everything a public issue. Because here's the thing. If Devin Haney now does business with Eddie Hearn, that's going to look bizarre as well. So you keep calling out Tank, but then you never sign with PBC or Al Heyman. You said Eddie Hearn is the biggest snake in the room and he's the biggest, you know, fakest person that you know, wah, wah, wompty. And even if you delete the tweets, you can't delete it out of our memories. Just like even when you get your loss overturned and reversed, it doesn't reverse our memories of what happened in the Ryan Garcia fight. So that being said, imagine Devin doing his next fight with Eddie Hearn. You just said he was the biggest snake and the fakest ninja in the room. So how you do a fight, let's say he does Liam Paro. How you do a fight with that person? You're going to look crazy. All because you got mad and temporarily angry because you couldn't get tickets in a situation. They let you in some kind of way. It all worked out. But now you can't reverse what you said about the man publicly. So if you start doing business with Eddie Hearn again, you're going to look like the snake. You see how that works?